Hello, I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and I would like to take you through the code for Goose, the Flash multi-touch emulator and processor, available at gooseflash.wordpress.com. Goose is part of the Flash Feathers series of advanced interface classes, available at flashfeathers.wordpress.com. Goose is a multi-touch emulator and processor um, that provide, lets you put multiple cursors into your Flash application. The code uh, download code is available here. Uh, download Goose Zip on the site. When you do, you'll receive a um, a folder with a chart in it like this, and we'll use this chart to give an overview of the code that we're going to look through. Goose has two parts to it. One is the emulator and the other is the processor. The emulator, there's an online emulator available at danzen.com slash goose slash node.html. What you do is you go to that URL on one computer and that gives you a mouse. And then you go to another computer, go to that URL on another computer and you've got a second mouse. Uh, you can go to more computers as well. Each of these mouses, uh, the cursors, uh, will eventually show up in your application here so that you can drag around um, things with multiple cursors and scale them, etc., just as if they're fingers. The data from our cursors go into Robin. Robin is an open source Flash PHP uh, multi user system, uh, also available at Flash Feathers or robinflash.wordpress.com. We've got that running on Dan Zen, so you don't really need to worry about it. Um, but if you want, you can get your own mouse emulators up and running. Certainly if you use Goose a lot, you might consider doing that, and then you can administer them, etc. It's quite easy to do. You go to uh, robinflash.wordpress.com, download the zip file, put the PHP pages on your server, Go to a setup.php and put in the IP address to your server. Run the admin page and hit the start button. That gets your Robin running. In the Goose Robin uh, class, which is provided, we'll take a quick look at that, uh, you would need to change the server address to your server. And that's it. Then you can have your own mouse node. So you would publish your um, multi-touch emulator that's provided. We'll see that and put that on your own site as well. And then you use your own multi-touch emulators, uh, etc. All right. So the data from here comes into Goose Robin. Once again, if you use uh, the Dan Zen ones, then you don't have to do any of that stuff that we were just talking about. It, it will just work. That data comes into Goose Robin. Goose Robin passes it to Goose Data. Goose Data converts that data into uh, a simple XML language called ManyML. Uh, it just stores X, Y, and Z for, um, for various items. That Goose data then is read into Goose. So that's the emulator side of things. It ends at the Goose data. So um, uh, the Goose and, and these classes are the processing side. And it's kind of neat that that separation is there because if you have your own uh, multi-touch data coming from a blob detect table or a multi-touch device, then you can pass that data into Goose rather than the emulator data into Goose. You would just need to convert your data into that simple XML language um, and pass that, that into Goose. So Goose is our processing class. It uh, provides methods like start, follow, stop, file, follow, uh, start, scale, stop, scale, as well as um, the Goose events here for press, press down, press up, press move, and, and there's more of them. You use these in your, your application document class. We provided a sample document class, and uh, you can see how our, we're, uh, we'll take a look at that, how um, how Goose is used in there to bring our cursor data in and allow us to move and scale pictures, for instance, and press press on buttons, etc. Okay, let's see what we get in the um, zip file. This is the samples. There's the zip file. Uh, you get a samples folder, uh, a com folder. A README, uh, that chart that we were just looking at, and uh, icons for 
flash feathers. The COM folder holds your Danzen package and your interfaces package and your goose package and in there are those white classes that we were looking at. We'll take a look at through those. Now what that means is your COM folder your COM folder needs to be in a folder in your class path. Do not put your COM folder in your class path but rather have a classes folder for instance. Put your classes folder in a class path and there's uh, documentation that tells you how to do this and then put your COM folder with all those other folders in it inside of your classes folder and then things will run smoothly. We also have a samples folder which has a multi-touch emulator node. Now you won't have to play with that unless you um, install your own multi-touch nodes. Um, and then there's a goose example that's provided. Then there's your document classes for those. All right, let's go to Flash here. And this is our goose example FLA. Now let's start by looking at the um, the Goose classes. Goose Robin, you won't need to go into here unless you uh, want to install your own uh, multi-touch emulator. If you do, then you'll just need to change this line to say where your server is. Do not include the HTTP there, as it says. And Goose Robin is uh, what's doing all that multi-touch, uh, or sorry, uh, multi-user work. Goose data calls on uh, Robin or Goose Robin and you don't need to do anything in here I don't think at any time. It converts it to the XML and there's a sample of converting our pretty well raw X, Y, and Z data into an XML uh, version of just a few things. Uh, Goose. Uh, Goose is fairly well documented it talks about the, the two sides and how you use Goose. We'll look through the Goose sample to see that. There's an example of the many ML, some item, an ID, an X, a Y, and a Z data. Uh, for each cursor you get an item. Let's see, uh, it provides uh, the information about the constructor, the events, the methods, uh, the properties and so forth. You pass in um, to the constructor just whether you want to show the cursors or not. That's it. It's a pretty simple constructor. The important method really is the update method where you pass in the information. We'll see how this works in the example. Um, there's a fair bit of code in here that's processing each of the cursors and dispatching uh, events. Uh, and so forth with cursor IDs, etc. Uh, there's the dispatch pr dispatch press event. You can add listeners, etc. There's the start follow method. Uh, this is obviously uh, fairly complex. You don't need to work in here at all. Uh, there's a stop follow method. Uh, the start scale method. So that is what is scaling your your items with multiple cursors stop scaling, etc. And a dispose. All right, now into the Goose example and what we'll do is we'll start up a new video to talk about uh, the Goose example and how you use the Goose classes. I've been Inventor Dan Zen. Uh, tune in to part two as we show the uh, sample document in action.